Every time I watch that darn cartoon, I wait and I look for Scooby-Doo to come around behind the behind the, the, the graveyard there, maybe Shaggy, maybe the mystery machine. But anyway, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is for you, wherever you are on the static planet where we are home base from, of course, otherwise known as Windsor, Ontario, the border town across from Detroit, Michigan. Now you have an idea where we're at. My name, of course, is Michael John of Michael John Paranormal Ghost Stories. I am the co-ghost host, along with that dude right next to me, that handsome man, the man of the hour, the man of the power too sweet to be sour. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dale. Hi, Spirits Quigley. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic, man. Just been, been just itching at the bit to get at this interview tonight because the, our guest tonight, like I said, I just love these people to death and I'm so excited for what's about to come, but we are going to be talking about that in just a little bit. So, But I do want to mention coming up, very, very soon. I think just about two weeks from this Saturday, we are going to be debuting our speaker at the Body, Mind, and Spirit Spring Fling event right there in Oxford, Michigan. That's right, folks. Come on down. The Paranormal Voice, Dale, Michael, myself. I just talked to myself in a third party, did I not? Wow, that is amazing, man. I'm so beside myself. But yes, no, our debut speaking gig coming up on April 20th, right there in Oxford, Michigan, at Spring Fling Body and Mind event with, of course, Axie and Candace, two amazing ladies putting on a spectacular event. It's only five dollars to get through the door. So come on, Dan. They have all kinds of amazing things going on. They have they have tarot readings going on, Reiki going on, they've got psychics, they've and then you've got the Paranormal Voice Boys that are going to be there speaking as well. So we are super excited about that. Oh Can't God. wait to get in front of everybody and start talking. We're going to talk about shadow figures. You're going to talk about how the Paranormal Voice podcast came to be, the ins and outs, the what we do, what we don't do, what we try to do, how we try to get it done. And then together we can do a tag team speak engagement as well uh, to, to wrap it up, if you will, for us. Uh, for that event, uh, the Body, Mind, and Spirit out in Oxford, where we're going to talk about spirit communication, communicating with the dead. When you speak to the dead, they hear you, all that sort of good stuff. Experiences we've had, you with your father, me with my father, pets in my life as well. It's going to be a great time. I cannot wait for that. But let's get to the task at hand. Oh, my God. Synonymous, what we're going to talk about, the Oliver House, the Mommy Bay Brewing Company. This is the fifth annual event happening. It's known as the Midwest Parafest. Number five in the books. How awesome is that? What a creation. So tonight's guests uh, together, uh, they've created this. For Dale and myself, uh, anybody out there listening, uh, watching, uh, they represent the paranormal community that we've been very, as I got to say, hashtag blessed, thankful, grateful, humbled to uh, to be a part of the very genuine people uh, and anybody would i would co-sign that in a heartbeat i guarantee it uh two very major supporters uh of any of those around uh doing their thing here in the community um if you go to any para convention dale i know you agree with us if you don't see at least one of these two individuals that's all that's impossible you're gonna see one of them <laughs> out there supporting you know what i mean I inspiring oh, they are they are what it's about you know, and, and there's somebody to look up to as a mentor and be, I want to be like them. I want, you know what I mean? I want to be a community member like there, if you will. And, you know, I don't use that term loosely. A lot of people don't like that term, but friends become family and that's where it is with us. We, we've, we've been very fortunate to get closer to these two individuals as well. Um, they are paranormally passionate. Um, definitely got to say that. And, and we're going to wrap it up with this. To know them is definitely a gift. Um, now, for us to be with them 
at this creation of theirs, April 13th, 2024, the Oliver House, the Mommy Bay Brewing Company, Midwest Parafest 5, all going down Toledo, Ohio. Please welcome TPV Nation, KGRA Digital, Facebook, and YouTube. We are proud to call them our friends, our family, Chad Dye and Heather Hansen. Oh, one more week. <laughs> yeah. One more week, and then we could just say the Die family. Absolutely. Well, we can say that now because you guys have been together for so long. I'm sure. I'm sure it's still going to be amazing. You know, you're kicking off the festivities festivities of next weekend. Actual having a wedding ceremony, which is so exciting. I could not be more happier for you guys because. You guys have been absolutely amazing, and as long as I've known you guys, you guys have been together. So, like, this is just like, I guess, the wedding cake on top. <laughs> Thanks, uh -oh. Dale. You're, you're kind of glitching on us. I, I, I know this is like so hard. I'm not used to this. This is this is a work. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I can yeah, hear we can you. hear you fine. All right, I'm not sure where Dale's going. So what we're gonna do? Uh oh, uh, I have an intro. Oh, there What's he is. Going on so here? Uh -oh. April 12th is when it all goes down for 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 you guys as a couple. Can you guys hear me? Coming, you're yeah, good now. Becoming know. intertwined as one. It's it's marriage time, hand in hand. You guys are gonna go down the aisle, the paranormal aisle, forevermore. <laughs> you gotta be excited about that. Let's talk about that first, please. All right. After almost 10 years together, it'll be 10 years in July from when we first started dating. Um, we're, we're finally making it official. I know that lots of people who know us have thought that we've been married this whole time. Um, but someone didn't want to do that right off the bat. So I had to talk him into it. <laughs> oh, so Chad, you weren't ready. You had cold feet for a bit. Uh, I've been married twice before. Okay. So being a three-time loser was not very appealing to me and i didn't want to put yeah. her through that so we yeah. really just had to test the waters and make sure we we're compatible mm -hmm. and she is my favorite person she's my best friend love her. and it just makes sense i, I love that for you both yeah. that's so nice yes we enjoy working together um this is our baby midwest yeah. Parafest five is our baby uh born out of an idea in 2017 that we honestly didn't really want to do. Um, yeah. But the team we were with at the time said, sure, yeah, let's do that. So it was it was born and raised and here we are. And when we decided to get married, uh, we couldn't think of any better way to celebrate our wedding than with all of our paranormal family and so I said, well, if we're going to have Parafest, we might as well have our wedding the night before and invite all of our friends. And he was like, what? No, wait. And then he <laughs> said, you know, I guess I hate it when you're right. Because <laughs> if you're coming into town for the Parafest, you know. Yeah. And you, when you see, whenever you see the two of you together somewhere, I mean, it's undeniable the closeness you have. You guys are like each other's shadow. You're, you're, you know, peas and carrots. Let's use that as well. That's who you guys are. I mean, any Stevie Wonder would see that, I'd, I'd like to say. I mean, <laughs> you can truly see the love you two have for each other, and, and it comes out. You know what I mean? And on top of that, it trickles over. And I was saying that, uh, introducing you guys, um, the support you have, not only for Dale and me, and thank you so much for that. We're, I, you we know, love you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. But you, you, you share that with so many people. I've witnessed it countless occasions at different events. You know, I just see, oh my, well, there they are. And, and you know what I mean? You're there with the people running running the, the, the convention there for, you know, or whatever the event might be. But you guys are there. You're sponsoring it. You know what I mean? You're getting involved. And that says so much about your character and, and your integrity and everything about who you two are. So it's a, it's great to have you guys here right now and to share a special night watching the wedding with you. That's that's going to be amazing. But then on top of that, we get to be a part of the Midwest Parafest 5. This is my debut. I'm a little nervous. I'm making my debut there with you guys. Yeah, so. nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> Dale, are you yeah, with us? 
Oh, there is. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm still here. You can't get rid of me that easy. No, no. I, I mean, I really enjoyed uh, the event last year, and it was, and I just love the building itself. Like, the building is a character of its own, and it was, it, it was just one of those places. It's just like, wow. If these walls can talk, I would love to hear the stories. Just having that little opportunity every now and again to wander through the building was such amazing like what amazing venue you guys found there and being able because i know you this is not where this started this actually started in a different location Mm -hmm. and then you guys moved it over to this location so talk a little bit about the oliver house and how it came to be that you thought this would be a perfect fit because it is it is definitely a great venue for what you guys are doing Though it's a great venue for what you guys are doing is what I caught there. I'm reading the subtitles. <laughs> uh, it's a great venue for what you guys are doing there. We want to know what what made you guys want to go to the Oliver House. Well, we we had done two years at Toledo Yacht Club, and it was a great location. Everybody who came in uh, got great evidence, and I don't know. The the venue kind of outgrew what we were doing. And every year we try to do the event in like April, but both years we got flooded out. What? One year wow. people people had to take their shoes and socks off to go to their car in the parking lot to move their car. Um, it was just the wrong time of year for that location. So when we decided to move to somewhere else, somebody had suggested the Oliver house that we had never really heard of. And we did our research and looked into it and thought, Hey, we could give this a shot. So we started doing our research on it, talking to people that work there. And it really is a cool venue. And, you know, it's got a a very long standing history. It's one of the oldest buildings in Toledo. That's never been abandoned. It's always okay. been some kind of business. Okay. Now, with that history, and as how many years has it been around? What's what's the date on that, roughly? Uh, it was the late 1800s because they built it near the railroad tracks, Ooh. near a train depot. Okay. Um, and it was like the most sophisticated uh, boarding house hotel at the time. Okay. Uh, every room had a fireplace they all had gas lighting and eventually the city moved further to the north and it just became something else it became a warehouse it became uh, a a storage place for a toy company and it's just always been something because the building itself is very cool it was actually built in 1859 Yes, there's the magic number. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. <laughs> Thank you. Real quick, let's say hello. We've got Candace Isaacson on the side, Lynn Ann Bowling. Speaking of supporters and great people, thank you so much, ladies, for popping in. Heather Hansen sneaking in there, too. She's multitasking, getting interviewed, and saying hello to everybody on the side. I love it. Uh, so the Oliver House, with, with the history on it and how long it's been around, any haunting history there? Oh, yes. For sure. We, we've we heard many stories. Um, we actually, at Halloween time this year, were fortunate to work with the Toledo, Ohio Ghost Hunter Society, Harold St. John and his team. And uh, we investigated and we did a presentation about ghost hunting in general. And then Harold shared some stories about the Oliver House that he got through in re- interviewing the staff and, and things of that nature. Um, I know that it's featured in stories probably all over YouTube and the internet. Okay. Uh, we we come to the Oliver House strictly from a place of it's a fantastic venue to okay. work with and to host an event at. Yeah. Um, you know, as much as we love to investigate, we are an hour from them. So it makes it a little difficult to like mm. become entrenched in the facility. You know, okay. even the 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 restaurant that we are involved in, the Whitney here in Detroit, you know, yes. we're only twenty minutes away, and we are not there as much as we'd like to be. Okay. So the Whitney, just we're going to sidetrack off off the tracks for a minute. Um, a few weeks ago, 
someone had uh, posted a photo from the Whitney and I had tagged you in it. Did you follow up on that? Did you get a chance to follow up on that? Was that the picture of the gentleman with the mustache and the bowler hat? What? Yes. Yes. Uh, we tried to get a hold of the camera footage in the building and the archives were not stored. The manager could not access them. Shoot. But we tried to debunk the picture. Okay. Chad went outside and took my picture standing in the same spot where this guy would have been. And his whole torso is not visible. You can oh, see God. the table. You can see his chest and yeah. his head and his hat. And then you can see the table in the window. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that no, I I I've heard a lot of great things about the Whitney. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about the Whitney, and and I know you guys host events there as well. So we work with them. They host paranormal dinner tours twice a month, and they bring you in. They give you a champagne tour, mm. a phenomenal meal, dessert, coffee. And then they send you down to the basement where we take over. So we do like a, a 30, 40 minute presentation. We talk about ghost hunting in general, because most of those people, they're not into the paranormal like we are, you know? Right. So we, we teach them about the equipment and what the rules are for ghost hunting. And then we actually take them out to the carriage house and actually let them investigate. So what is the carriage house, please? Got me intrigued. Uh, the carriage house would be a building outside of the mansion where they would park the carriages, maybe uh, put the horses in the stables or let them loose out in the meadow, whatever. But it's, it's where they stored the carriages of people who would come to visit, whether it was short term or long term. So like it was a garage before cars were a thing. Okay. Oh, Candace Eisen uh, saying, I had my experience at a private party uh, she was doing at the Whitney. They felt very upbeat uh, that night, was into the party theme, had knocking and whispers in the room I was in. Interesting. She had a good night that night. <laughs> I guess. Thank you, Candace, very much for that. And yeah, no, that that that's definitely a place. So you said that goes on twice a month? Yep. If you visit... TheWhitney.com, they have all of their events listed. Um, and if, at some point here soon, I think they're sold out for the April events. Um, we did let the manager know the rest of the dates for the year that we're available. Um, and so the May, June, July, August, you know, the rest of the year will be up for sale soon. Um, you know, full disclosure, it's a pricey ticket. Okay. Not going to lie, but you get... I think it's a four course meal, um, mm -hmm. cocktails, champagne, a historic tour, a dessert, coffee, a paranormal presentation and a paranormal investigation at one of the coolest places in the, in the state, I would say. Always in the top five of the most haunted in the state of Michigan. That says it all right there. Clearly worth the price of admission, uh, as they say. Now back to the Oliver House, the yep. Mommy Bay Brewing Company. Um, so die paranormal. Did die paranormal ever do investigations at the Oliver house or mommy Bay brewing company? We did this past year. Yes. We investigated with, uh, Tobes okay. to, prepare what? Our to prepare for the Halloween dinners that we did with them. Okay. Now any crazy experiences there for either one of you? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, you know, we were only there a few hours. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people <clears throat> think that you walk in and crazy stuff happens and you walk out and you have, you know, a recording of it, but right. it takes its time and you definitely have to spend as much time in the building as you can. So the spirits get comfortable with you and want to communicate right. with you. You know, the vibe is important. So yeah. We had a, a light anomaly we couldn't explain, um, but it, it could have been headlights. So, you know, we're very thorough in not, you know, when in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> yes. 
Well said. Uh -huh. exactly. I wish everything right out of the gate. I, I, we all want it to be paranormal. Boom, like that. Unfortunately, we got to kind of land the plane and be like, okay, wait a minute. What's going on? What else is going on around me? You know, or who's around, et cetera. I, I, lo I love that you put that out there like that. Um, what about in general for either of you? Um, let's, let's, we're, we're all over the place. It's, it's ADHD and OCD at its finest here. Uh, You're in so good company. Try to keep up. <laughs> um, for either one of you, what got you guys involved in the paranormal? So we love to ask all the time for both of you take whoever wants to start your first experiences at whatever age, how it got, what got you into this, all, all of that in, in please. I have never had any experiences before I became a paranormal investigator. Um, you know, you grow up and your parents tell you there's no such thing as the boogeyman. There are no ghosts, right? So you yeah. grow up believing that. And I was really intrigued with like found footage stuff on TV, uh, in search of with oh. Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. You know, I love that kind of stuff, especially the UFO stuff. So I guess at heart, I'm a UFO guy. Okay. Um, I've never been on that kind of investigation <clears throat> but i met somebody who knew a paranormal team and all the paranormal tv shows were brand new okay. and i saw some stuff that was really intriguing as far as the evidence goes and i've always believed uh even though i've been a practicing christian and all that other stuff i've always believed that there's more beyond this life and to see some of the stuff on those TV shows was intriguing to me. So I joined a team and I was the group skeptic. Perfect. Okay. Right. I'm the guy that wants to tell you that's not paranormal. Yes. So we'd go on investigations and nobody wanted to investigate with me because nobody got any evidence when they were with me because they thought I was bringing down the room because of my <laughs> negativity. Right. Right. Until... I got touched. My name was said on a voice recorder in a room where nobody else was. I took a picture of something I can't explain. Right? So I kind of loosened up a little bit. I'm on the paranormal bandwagon, but I still want to prove that it's paranormal before I say it is. Right. They're making fun of you in the chat. Why? Axie. Hello, Axie. Exy said, shocker, and Candace said, Chad is ghost repellent. <laughs> I am ghost repellent. <laughs> uh, more. So, uh, he, uh, you know, he was investigating from 2011, 2010, 2011. Yeah. Um, and then we met in 2014. And I had had a couple experiences as a young adult. I had seen two full body apparitions in a basement wow. um one of them both of them paralyzed me uh but one more than the other oh my uh, then uh, my ex-husband was not he did not talk about the paranormal he had had some really intense experiences so it just was i call it like the fight club of our marriage like he didn't want to talk about ghosts um so then i see this guy who i had worked with at an art festival posting about shawshank and I'm like, hmm, that looks interesting. Mm. And uh, you'll hear this again. But I said, did, did you need a second set of eyes watching that footage so you don't miss anything? And there was our first date <laughs> 10 years ago. And I personally have always been a fan of the architecture, the stories, and the history of places. Um, coming into this community for me for chad it was about ghost hunting right like he he was interested in possibly catching some experiences yes for me when i went to the stanley hotel for strange escapes with him in 2015 it was like wow everybody was so kind and and friendly and it was yeah. like this comfort of being home and as somebody who had worked in event production for a few years before I met him, my wheels started turning because it was a cool event. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we we kind of balled it all up together, you know, with 
I did join the team uh, that he was on and we would go on house investigations and we would go to locations and, and catch some really cool stuff. Um, but at that, at that yacht club, we got a lot of evidence. We got seasoned in the stories and got lots of practice. Um, and it brought us to where we are today. So thank you. Oh, you're amazing. So, you know, most people out there say they've got gifts or they've got talents. What would you guys say is your paranormal bring to the table type of thing? You know, I'm going to say I don't have any gifts. <clears throat> I'm kind of a jerk. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when I talk, I sound aggressive. And anybody in this chat will tell you that it's, it's just the way I speak, but I try and keep it real. And I try and, I try and make a connection with the spirits. I try and let them know, look, we're here for you. You know, we want to help you. If there's anything we can do, let us know, yeah. you know, you want to pass on a message to a loved one, whatever, but I have zero gifts whatsoever. 100%. I, sometimes I can walk into a room and you can feel like it's really static and the hair stands up and you know there's some kind of activity there. Or you can walk into a room and it feels like it's stifling, like it's a negative kind of vibe. Other than that, I got nothing. He likes tech. He's good with tech. Don't let okay. him sell himself short. Um, he's he's very direct in his communication with the speakers and it comes off assertive and sometimes aggressive. I sound like the Charlie Brown teacher when we're doing audio. I have a very teacher voice to myself. So when we first started investigating together, he brought that up to me. He'd be listening to our our audio and he'd be like, man, there you go again. <laughs> you can tell it's you because you sound like a teacher. Uh, <laughs> But I think that our biggest gift is in our connecting with the people who we're around. Um, I love bringing the the new people from the Whitney. Like I like engaging with them enough to get them interested in the paranormal community as a whole. Like, yeah, you come for the building and you come for the experience and you hope you're going to, you know, I think most people come because they want to jump scare. I don't know. Um, we don't, but we don't do that, you know, right. they, but once you've connected with somebody, oh, sorry, hold on. <laughs> While we're waiting there, we're going to say hello to Boo Productions Paranormal Toledo. Uh, Jeff and Dana, I see that. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, our puppies bark every time somebody comes in the house. So. That's all right. They're doing what they're supposed to. We, we, no. love, we love our paranormal community. You know, all the people that we interact with and that we go to the events with, you know, we just feel like these people are family to us. They're not just people we know, like you guys. Right. You're not just people we know. When we go to an event and we see you, we hug you. We shake your hand. We hang out with you. And it's genuine, genuinely a, a love for our connection mm -hmm. based on what the paranormal community has brought us into. But I think the thing for us is educating people, you know, letting people know what the paranormal community is all about. And it's not all about the jump scares. It's not a haunted house, right? right? Mm -hmm. Per se, like Erebus or something like that. It's, it's a house that may be haunted and we want to get to the bottom of it. You know, we're researchers, we're investigators. Right. We're not just out there to scare ourselves. And right. I, I think that's our strong point is that we work very well together uh, right. as a team to do the research and to genuinely care about those spirits that have, you know, passed on from the earthly world that may want to communicate with us. And I, I think even though I may not be a psychic medium or I don't have any special skills, you know, like that, I, I think... I bring to the table, we bring to the table that genuine caring and compassion yeah. for those who have passed on. 
that may still be here and may not even know they're dead. Yeah, I think that connection with the living and the dead is our superpower. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. And, and I just want to touch more about uh, what uh, Chad was saying about how much everything feels like a family, like every event we go to, everywhere we go, everybody we run into, it doesn't feel like we're strangers. I mean, we're all family. We're all there for the same reason, and we're all passionate about what we do and how we do it. And I think that's what works so well with all of us and why we get along so well. Like I said, it is it is so nice to see how organizers like to support one another. Like like Michael John says, like you guys are at every event possible you guys can make it to. Like you guys have busy lives too, but here you guys are showing up at everybody else's event, showing support, and it all trickles down as is everybody is there to support each other. And I think that's what me and Michael John love the most about being able to do what we do is being able to enjoy and be a part of such an amazing family. Well, so we, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, you guys live in South Detroit. Okay. You live <laughs> yes, in Windsor, do. which yeah. is South Detroit. Yes. So you're like, to me, you're part of the Michigan family because you're so close and you, you also, you guys, whenever possible, come to these events, even if you don't come there as the paranormal voice, you come to the events, right? So you've experienced that familiness, yeah. you know, that yes. familiarity. Um, but of all the states in the U S Michigan has the best paranormal teams. Okay. We all get along together. We we plan events together. We go to each other's events, and we sponsor each other. We support yes. each other. We put each other's information out there on you know social media, and well, don't I, forget about our friends in Toledo too. Well, we I do mean, have friends know. in Toledo too, <laughs> and they've talked about how. You know, sometimes it feels like a turf war with some of the other teams. Oh, wow. Yeah. But they are really working towards being more cohesive as okay. teams in Toledo and the outlying areas. But, you know, they, they feel the same love that you do, that we do yes. with the Michigan teams. And, like, we've worked very closely with the Kling brothers. They've yeah. asked to come to our events. To be speakers they've asked us to come to their events in texas we just as a team as paranormal investigators show that love to other people and they get it yeah. you know there there is no competition we yeah. learn from each other absolutely you know and i could not agree more like that is the bottom line there is no competition everybody is in it all for the same reason and there's no no reason for us not to be getting along because together we are stronger than we are alone and the information is always going to be there but i want to jump in because you guys have such an amazing speakers lineup this year i mean I, I, I'm talking like the cream of the crop. I mean, you've got some of the who's who and everybody on here is absolutely amazing at what they do and their gifts. And I mean, so we, we'll, we'll talk about each one and we'll start right from the top left. We'll go with everybody's favorite, the paranormal sweetheart, the one, the one lady that lights up a room that is Andrea Perron. I mean, wow, what an amazing lady. Yep, she'll be closing out the speakers in the historic lobby um, with her presentation. We never know, you know, what exactly she's going to talk about because she's got such a wealth of knowledge about the paranormal, yeah, having, yeah. you know, been the oldest sister in the Conjuring house. Um, and then she has all of her extraterrestrial intergalactic connections and she fills it all up with love and peace yeah, yeah. and kindness 
And, you know, we just, we love to have her. She's been with us a couple of years out of our five years now. Um, and she goes on from four o'clock to five o'clock in our speaker room. Yep. Oh, and she did sell out her VIP dinner table. Wow. <laughs> very quickly. So there are <laughs> seven very lucky people having dinner with Andrea Perrin. I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, and that's another really cool aspect of what you guys are doing this year. So everybody has an opportunity to be able to sit at the table with one of the panelists or the speakers have dinner with them be able to have that opportunity to really have some time to really sit down and talk with them like that is such a great idea thank you we wanted to give in the years past we've done vip dinners where it was random and you just bought a ticket and we had the celebrities sit. I call them celebrities. We had our guest speakers sit uh, at random tables. But this year we thought after receiving multiple requests in years past, like, can I sit at so-and-so's table? Can you make sure I get at so-and-so's table? And it was completely random. Um, right. We decided this year that we would offer specific seats that way you can choose who you wanted to have dinner with. And for our five panelists who are doing the psychic panel at 11 a.m. No, okay. I'm sorry. The psychic panel's at 1215. I'm looking at our schedule. Yes. Um, and you, if you sit at one of their tables, you're almost guaranteed a reading. I mean, you've got two hours with them. And so if there's a connection to be made they're going to make that connection with you. And if they don't make that connection directly at dinner, imagine the relationship you've already started and forged or built upon, you know? So for anybody who would like that personal experience, um, before we dive into the rest of the list, yeah. your VIP dinner ticket is $150 and it includes your choice of uh, seated plated meals. Um, we have a, abbreviated menu with the Rockwells, the steakhouse there in the Oliver house. And it includes your attendance to the conference presentations and early access to the vendor show in the warehouse. Okay. So you'll get to see our speakers, our panelists, you'll get, you know, VIP treatment at dinner and VIP treatment at the warehouse where if you want to book a specific reading with somebody, they book up. Like people's appointment books fill up for the day. So if you get in at 10 instead of 11, you're going to be able to get on their schedule sooner. Okay. And then next on the list, you have the one and only the incomparable <laughs> Johnny Altenny. Never tells the same story twice. You never know what he's going to talk about. A to Z paranormal wise could be cryptids, could be gnomes, could be elves, could be interdimensional beings you don't know well he and jessica are bringing their what's up weirdo connection to us for oh, that okay. yeah they're gonna they're gonna wow us with their weirdness together as they have in years past perfect and not, not only that <clears throat> excuse me not only that john tenney is the one that's going to marry us the night before the event wow how cool is that oh my god we're excited about that. I, I, we had so many fantastic friends offer to marry us. And if I hadn't decided years ago that if this guy ever married me, it was going to have to be John who did the ceremony. <laughs> I, I kind of had my heart set on both of them. I guess, okay. I guess, you know, when Chad asked him if he would do it, he said, I never thought he'd be asking a guy to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited, excited that he's going to be there for us and, and, and yeah. just be a part of our special night. But I mean, there are no less than eight people offered. How to many? At our wedding, no less than eight. I can't even remember. And, and we just feel so blessed that so many people care about us enough to, yeah. to want to be a part of our day. So that's why we figured it's an open house. So whether you're a ticket holder, a vendor, a speaker, a friend, a family member, we're partying from six to eight, from six to 11 Friday night. Oof. Vows are at eight o'clock. It's open house. 
come over whenever. Yeah. Like show up. We don't care. Vows are at eight. Cash bar, cash menu. It's just a party. Right? We we are <laughs> supplying dessert though. Yeah, we are supplying dessert. Oh, nice. <laughs> and a DJ, so it'll be fun. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Nice, nice. And I mean, what 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 exciting! I mean, to say that you know John Tunney officiated your wedding. I mean, that that is a special moment in itself. And I mean, that's just going to be a highlight just to see how he's going to put all that together. And I'm sure he's not going to be. It's not going to be traditional. Knowing John Tunney the way he is, <laughs> it is not going to be traditional. But it's going to be an amazing event in itself. Well, he has vowed that he is going to make me cry. Ooh, ooh, yeah. geez, we, we got to so, get the cameras on Chad then because this is going to be a moment. Yeah, <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> but uh, as you know. John Tenney is a very dynamic speaker. Yeah. You know, he holds your attention. He is probably one of the smartest guys I know. You know, whether he's college ed educated or not, he is one of the smartest guys I know. He could talk to you intelligently about old Sumerian, you know, <laughs> language or whatever. But yeah. the, the guy is a researcher and he's very intelligent and smart. And he's just so easy to talk to. And when you listen to What's Up Weirdo, yeah, you know, it, it's it's him and Jessica, and it's like listen to two of your best friends talking on the phone together. Yes. And it's fun and it's interesting, it and we love having them at our events. I've caught a couple episode so it's of What's Up Weirdo. Sometimes in my job, if I'm working weekends, I'm by myself so I can throw on YouTube so I have something in the background. So I yeah. Like John Tenney sitting on the floor at his coffee table, having a drink, eating a slice yes. of pizza, and they're talking about paranormal stuff, and they're hilarious too. They're they're great. Yes, it definitely breaks the. You know, we hear so much through the news, through social media, that's sad and negative and angry and stressful, and listening to them is like. It's sometimes it's like watching a comic show, <laughs> you know, um, they, they just bring a lightheartedness to it and a silliness to it. And just being around them makes you feel good. So we love having them back with us. The show is very refreshing. If you get a chance to yes. watch. It, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So next we have Amber Rose Hammond, a, an amazing author, speaker. I listened to her last year at the Old Mill Parafest. That woman is very knowledgeable on her subject of the paranormal. And she, and I mean, all of her books are not just on one particular thing. It, she writes about everything. And the knowledge that she has, I mean, what an amazing woman. And I've had the pleasure of talking to her a couple times, but like I said, what what an asset to the paranormal community Absolutely. that Amber Rose brings. I mean, wow, she's just that good, and I look forward to hopefully catching her speak this year. Yeah, she's been researching the paranormal for twenty years. Uh, you know, her books are well rounded. She's genuinely a fun person to be around. She comes off very shy and unassuming, but she is a wealth of knowledge as well and very interesting to talk to and hang out with. And actually co-signs that for sure. Amber Rose is a fantastic speaker. She says her books, fantastic reads. Absolutely. I, I would agree with that. Uh Mike, you want to introduce the next person? Because this, this is the lady that you introduced me to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so one of my one of my guilty pleasures is uh, cryptozoology. Uh, Bigfoot, that was where I kind of started cutting my teeth, if you will. Um, and then just by a freak chance, again, at work, listening to stuff in the background, the good old YouTube algorithm. Um, all of a sudden, I'm hearing about this cryptid called Dogman. Uh, Vic Cundiff, uh, Dogman Counters Radio. Uh, and somehow I stumbled upon, oh, we, we met Chatan Noir at the, what the, there's so many para conventions. What was it, Dale? The Mid-Michigan. 
the Mid Michigan. Sorry, I yes, yes, Mid Michigan. Yeah, yeah, we ran into her there, um, and she's just going on and on and on um, about Dog Man and, and you know the, the signs of Dog Man and, and the potentials of it. You know, if there's deer around, there's that's a food source, whether it's Dog Man or or Bigfoot, for example, running water, etc. I mean, I fell in love with her as soon as she had me a cryptid. You know, um, she, she's, she writes books. She's got magazines out. Very knowledgeable. I think she does courses on occasion for universities and colleges. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, yeah, I think she does. Her Between her magazines, her lectures. Yes. She's a very well-rounded person as well. Yeah. And to have her to, to, to sit under that learning tree at a dinner table, you know what I mean? Just yeah. picking her brain about the, the cryptozoology topic. And again, you know, the Nain Rouge, I think Amber Rose Hammond is talking about the Nain Rouge in one of her books as well. So it's kind of an intertwining there, but that's the first place I heard, uh, we were talking about that backstage. Uh, the first place I heard about the Nain Rouge was from Chatan Noir. She is a, wa I, I call her a walking book because she is a book of knowledge. To talk to her is like opening a book. So what a great catch you got her to sit and have dinner with her, just to be there and, you know, be around her at, the Midwest Parafest is going to be great along with everybody else. So good, good, good on scoring her for sure. She's, she's opening up the presentations. She's our first presenter at 11 a.m. in the lobby. Okay. And now to a lady that we all truly love. Like, I mean, Axie and myself go way back to when she had her very first book. I met her at the MI Paracon. And we clicked so well. And I mean, she is such an amazing person. And her talents are go way beyond what I'm even able to comprehend. And I'm just so glad that we can call her a really close good friend. Because like I said, I, I love every moment that I can get to spend with Exy. Because like I said, she's an absolute sweetheart. And I'm glad that she is a part of the Midwest Parafest Five because, like I said, she she she's another one at almost every Michigan event. She she is there. She she I, is showing up and doing her thing. Yeah, she's become a very near and dear friend to us. Um, definitely somebody whose intuition, and I mean, I call it intuition. Obviously, she's very gifted, but she uh, she is thorough and accurate and detailed in her gifts. Um, I My mind has been blown on more than one occasion and she's a sounding board uh, for, for me. I appreciate her as a person, as a psychic, as an author. Um, she's just all around one of our favorites. And so we, we usually would do an XE only gallery during our event. We've done that a couple of times. Um, but this year she was fully supportive of doing a panel and doing this VIP dinner, you know, table side gallery type concept. So I appreciate her helping us branch out into something new and bringing the light to four other very talented psychics and mediums in our community and sharing her spotlight with them. And you know what, Exy, you know, you got to love her. I mean, good friends with Dale for a long time. They do have a, a history together. Um, and she welcomed me with open arms. Well, she puts up with me, I guess we'll say it like that. <laughs> Poor lady. So, you know, uh, she but, tolerates you, Michael John, huh? Yes. That's yes, Chad's exactly. favorite word. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then you have Candace Isaacson, Mary Bassett, Brian Danhausen, Tim Shaw. What a list. We are really excited to bring Tim Shaw to the event from New York. Um, he's not been a speaker at our, you know, at one of our events. Um, so we're excited to get to know him, to work with him yes. and yes. to hear what he has to share. Brian has been a vendor at our event yes. every year. His spirit paintings are renowned everyone loves them big hit and we yeah. thought you know he's got such a connection to the spirit world that he needs to share with us as well um 
Mary, we've only known for a couple of years, but felt like it was an instant connection with her. Yeah. He's definitely got her own spin on things and, and is unique in her talents. Um, so it just made sense to have her join us. And then, of course, Candace. Well, Candace and Axie worked together doing yeah. the spring, is it my, Body and Mind? Sorry, I'm flubbing on the event on the 20th, <laughs> the ladies. Um, but the, the Body, Spirit, and Mind Spring Fling event. There All it is. right, there it is. And <laughs> and they are they are a powerhouse, the two of them. So oh, this, God, yeah. this 45 minute psychic panel with 15 to 20 minutes of you know meet and greet private chat yeah. or ticket holders um afterwards is gonna be probably pretty mind blowing um when they share can you imagine all of that power together in one presentation? I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be definitely a powerful room for sure. And so now, when does when does everything take place? Like out of the gate, April thirteenth. Yep. That, so that day, right. Yep, April thirteenth. The doors open to ticket holders at ten a.m. Um, because in addition to all of these fantastic speakers, we also have. 20 plus vendors coming to the spring spirits vendor show. Um, and that's taking place in the warehouse of the Oliver house property right across the parking lot. Um, and ticket holders come in at 10 AM yep. check in so they can get their wristbands and go get their seats in the lobby, get their coffee or maybe a mimosa. <laughs> um, and, and get ready for Shatan's presentation at 11. Yep. Uh, followed by the psychic panel at 12.15. Amber Rose kicks off at 1.30. John and Jessica are taking the stage, so to speak, at 2.45. And then Andrea starts our last presentation at 4 o'clock. Takes us right to the VIP dinner at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8. Um, but during all of this, the Spring Spirits Vendor Show is happening. Uh, it opens at 11 to the general public. Um, and we have a list of those vendors we'd love to share. Please. All right. Well, so in the past, you could only see the vendors if you bought a ticket to the conference. And that kind of limits what the vendors can sell because you only have so many people coming in. And Mommy Bay has had, in the past, very successful uh you know, sip and shop events where they have vendors come into this warehouse. Maybe you can buy a wine or whatever, and you can shop all these vendors. And we thought, you know, what a great way for our vendors to be able to sell more possibly to the general public who don't really care about the paranormal, or maybe they don't want to pay to see somebody speak, but they want to buy their crystals or they want to buy some jewelry or a book or whatever or maybe they don't understand the power of seeing these presentations and they come to the warehouse mm. and they buy a beastie and they stumble upon john tenney's table and he reels them in with his you know otherworldly yeah. knowledge and then next yeah. thing you know they're coming to all the paracons because they're enlightened and and engaged and enriched by their visits so we figured give the general public access to so from 11 until 8 p.m the general public can get into the spring spirit vendor show for free um but at six o'clock when all of our vip dinner guests and the speakers go in to have dinner their tables will close okay. but all of the other vendors if they aren't attending the dinner are, are staying open until eight and there will be um, a limited brewery menu available for cash purchase and a cash bar during the vendor show on site. Um, and whether you're attending the speakers presentations um, or just coming for the warehouse vendor show, you can order from the brewery. If you just go right across the parking lot, you can have lunch at the brewery because their food is fantastic. Absolutely. So once again, I just want to stress to people that Tickets are still available to sit at any one of the 
speakers, tables that we that we were talking about. But that cutoff date is April 10th, right? Is your yeah, last chance to get your dinner ticket? Yeah, the website has the current updated availability uh, because there are three tables that are sold out in full, but there are six tables that are not sold out. And so you can get, you can choose your table at MidwestParafest.com. And again, $150 gets you your dinner, your conference ticket, and early bird access to the vendor show. So, folks, do not wait one more second. As soon as this show goes off the air, I want you guys to get over to the MidwestParafest.com website. Make sure you get your dinner ticket. So this way here, you can sit down with the person that you would love to sit sit around the table with and just talk. I mean, what what other way can you say that you actually got to sit there and have dinner with the Andrea Perons, the Tim Shaws, the Axies, the Candaces, the Bryants? In the Mar I mean, like all these people are very well, and I mean, they are so much fun to hang around. We know a lot of these people very personally, and they are so much fun, and you will not be disappointed. And with such great food, I mean, $150, I mean, you, you can't even go to a really good restaurant and not spend 150 bucks. And here you're getting tickets to see speakers, vendors. And you get to sit down and have a fantastic dinner with someone you you would really like to get to know a little bit more. So, like I said, tickets are going fast, so don't wait. Like I said, you got till April tenth to get your dinner tickets. So, please do not hesitate on that, and make sure you get to be with the person you would love to sit with. And if if dinner's not your thing, and you just want to come see the conference. Tickets to just the conference are only $50, and those are available as well. Okay. All right. So we want to thank, real quick before we say goodbye, we want to thank our sponsors because without the support of sponsors and volunteers, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, first and foremost, Chad's boss, Mac McCracken of Eagle Security Services out of Detroit, has supported us every year in increasing uh, contributions he doesn't believe in the ghosts, nope. <laughs> but he gives us money to bring you guys to the ghosts. So nice. we, uh, we appreciate him. And then also Holland, Ohio Paranormal Society, Jeff and Jennifer, uh, Stimson Hospital, who's coming as vendors, Chris Sturgill and his wife, Pam, uh, the Toledo, Ohio Ghost Hunter Society, our sponsors and vendors as well, Dark Shadows. My friend Dessa and Chad, the other Chad <laughs> in my life. Yeah, me, the uh, other Chad. They are coming as sponsors and volunteers. And then Rhonda Hart, mm -hmm. Rhonda's Mystic. I have her abbreviated She's name fantastic. there. Yeah. She's fantastic too. So we have we have fantastic sponsors and volunteers and support. You guys are fantastic for having us on. Um, and there's a full vendor list. There are, like I said. 20 plus vendors um, listed on the website. So you can check out who's going to be there. Get your cups, get your tumblers, get your plushies, get your yeah. readings, get your books, all the things. Eight to the you, might, you might even end up on the paranormal voice. You come on over to our table and talk to us and we're doing lives all, all day long from beginning to end. And we are not only going to be talking to the speakers and the panelists that are showing up, but we want to hear from the people that are attending the event. We want to hear your freakiest, creepiest ghost story. And if, it's something that blows us mind. We're going to sit you down on the table and we're going to let you tell the world about it because with KGRA, we are worldwide every Saturday night at 1 a.m. You can catch a brand new episode of The Paranormal Voice. But Heather, Chad, we love you guys. We can't wait to be a part of the whole marriage festivities next Friday night, one week from today. It is official for you two. Chad, there's no getting cold feet now. <laughs> no, no cold feet. <laughs> so I don't know. He I, said to me, I only had a couple weeks to till time ran out or something. And I was like, well, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to being his wife officially, finally, after all this time. Look, if anybody's going to back out, it's going to be her. It's not going to be me. 
<laughs> well, there'll be no backing out, sir. Uh, so, I guys, once you. again, I, I just want to oh. say I can't wait to see you guys next week. Give you guys a great big hug. And anybody who's listening right now, later on, make sure you get your tickets and attend the Midwest Parish Fest number five right there in Toledo, Ohio. It is an amazing event. You will not be disappointed. It's going to be a banger beginning to end. Thank you. Thanks we for having you. us on, Dale and Michael John. We love you guys. Thanks for having us on the show. And thank you guys back. I mean, first and foremost, you know, how, thank you for joining us and agreeing to do this. Uh, we don't get to do what we do uh, without great guests like yourself, TPV Nation members, the creeps, the freaks, the weirdos from day one to day now. We get to do this right here, what we love. Of course, Midwest Parafest number five is happening April 13th. That's next weekend. TPV Nation, the Paranormal Voice Boys, Dale Quigley, and myself, Michael John, we will be there. We hope to see you there. Great vendors, great speakers, a great time all around. Tickets and information, www.midwestparafest.com. We will see you all. On the other side, we'll see you all at the Midwest Parafest. But in the meantime and in between time, happy hauntings. Happy hauntings. Happy hauntings. Happy hauntings.